one of the effects of, of high altitude is it's a little bit like having a dose of influenza almost being at, at high altitude. The, a lot of your energy and a lot of your drive tends to be sapped. And people feel uh, fit and able to cope with altitude at different times, even during uh, a single, you know, the few months of an expedition. So obviously you've got to get people who are well acclimatized, who have the drive and the enthusiasm at the right time in order to sort of throw them towards the summit and say, go to it. And it, it is conceivable, though in actual fact, I mean, Tenzing and I were fit throughout the expedition. It would be conceivable that at the start of an expedition there might be uh, a couple of people who, who would have been more suited to the summit than later on. But there was, I don't think there was much doubt. At the latter stages of the expedition, we were very fit and we were very strong. So we were selected by the expedition leader, who was John Hunt, as the people to put in the final shove. Tell me just a little bit about the expedition you're planning now called From the Ocean to the Sky. Well, this is one actually I've been really keen on for quite a long time. You know, I've visited, uh, spent a lot of time in India one time and another, but I've never actually, I've always been passing through, and I'm a great expert on various unusual places in India. For instance, I've spent a great deal of time on the wharves in Calcutta trying to get all my equipment through and arguing with the customs. I'm probably you know, much more expert in that than most visitors to India. But I really haven't ever been taken the time to um, spend a long period sort of within the heart of India, within the villages, which really does comprise the majority of India. Well, what we're doing really is we're combining um, an expedition, which gives the challenge and the excitement, with an opportunity to experience, you know, the sort of the, the backcountry areas, the, the real people of India. So we're taking three jet boats, which are just sort of run about, 16 foot long boats, but can operate in very shallow water. And we want to go right from the Indian Ocean, from the salt water as it were, into which all rivers flow, and then go right up the Ganges for 1,500 miles through the heart of India and then up into the Himalayas and then battle our way up the rapids uh, through the hills and the mountains and get as high as we can with our jet boats. I hope we'll get the 6,000 feet because it's uh, pretty rough going uh, uh, up as far as that and beyond. And then we want to walk up and climb up, uh, you know, sort of small peak, 20,000 odd, more or less to complete the journey, uh, as it were, to the sky. A small peak, uh, 20,000 feet. Yeah. 20,000 feet, no, uh, you know, I mean, it's not a great... It can be difficult, but in general, it's not a great peak now. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were just having a brief conversation uh, earlier today talking about someone said Scotland is known as a, as a mountainous country. What would your guess be the highest mountain in Scotland is? I don't know. I've I'm been giving everyone trivia like that. Questions. I don't know, about 4,000 feet. 4,000 feet, yeah. And, and I drove through the Rockies, uh, the magnificent Rockies, just a few weeks ago and was absolutely stunned by another view of 10 and 12,000 feet. Yeah, but uh, I mean, beautiful mountains have nothing to do really with their altitude. Some of the most beautiful mountains in the world may only be three or 4,000 feet. I mean, all that altitude does is it makes it harder to climb them because of the lack of oxygen. You want to remember in the Himalayas that the, uh, the forest line, you know, is up at 12, 13, even 14,000 feet in places, as it is, of course, uh, you know, in North America in many places. So uh, 20,000 feet means normally that you're about 3,000 feet above uh, readily accessible areas. Now, if you come to New Zealand, on the other hand, the, the forest line there is only 4,000 feet. So if you climb a mountain of 7,000 feet, there's quite a considerable difficulty in getting up. And the same would apply in the south of South America. That's all relative, I think. But a 20,000-foot peak, it's hard work because of the altitude, but it may not necessarily be, you know, very technically difficult.